like when I play Warzone and then uh, if I if I do end up killing somebody and then I hear it's a kid, I'm like, all right, I guess I'm not too bad. I'm like, I'm still I'm still beating the little, the young ones. That's what it's all about. After the end of the day, <laughs> it's a big pat on the back for me. It is. It is. Uh, we'll do our Barry Horowitz <laughs> right here. <laughs>to another interview here on toned in entertainment today we're at florida supercon in miami beach florida we're here as part of bizarro wrestling and i'm here with the hawaiian warrior kakoa how you doing kakoa i'm doing great my man thank you for having me i really appreciate this definitely man you've been doing this for a while a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I went back to your Instagram. 2007, I saw some of your very first pictures. Yeah, I got uh, I got trained in in 2006. Um, like literally, as I was about to graduate as as a senior, like this wrestling school was was about to open. I had already gone. It was at uh, this pro wrestling memorabilia store. So the guy, like the owner, he had already known of me because I was always coming into his shop and. You know, I, I told him, like, you know, I wanted to be a wrestler. So then he ended up starting a school, and then he came to me and was like, you know, I want you to sign up with the, with the first class. So, uh, and the funny story is my dad was actually giving me, uh, like, a graduation present. So he gave, he was going to give me $500 as, like, a gift to take, like, uh, me and my high school sweetheart. We were just going to go on, like, a, a trip as, like, a congratulations, you graduated high school. And uh, then when uh, Bud Carson, who was the owner, when he approached me about the wrestling school, I was like, well, you know, I don't really have a lot of money. What, what, how much, so, how much can I si- sign up with? And he was like, well, how much money do you have? And I'm like, I have five hundred dollars. And he said, I had he a said, feeling I knew where this story was he going. He said, that's enough. <laughs> and and I went home and I told my girls, I, hey, we're, we're not going on a trip anymore. And she, but she understood, like, she knew that it was always a thing that I wanted to do. So yeah, I started in 2006. And my debut match was in October of of that year. We're we're creeping up on we're creeping up on 20. Wow, it did, has time flown by doing this? Yeah, it's. It's weird because when I tell people like so this year it'll be 17 and when I when I think about it and I think about all of the things that I've done and then how long ago some of these things were I'm like I I don't know it's like it, it feels like you know I feel like I've been doing this for less than 10 years because of how fast like time goes I'm like yeah I've been doing this for a little bit but I'm like 10 years just sounds so long and then saying 17 years sounds even longer which is insane to me but very blessed I'm still doing it what would you think if you went back and like watched those first years of matches now watching them to where you are now what would mm-hmm. you think has been maybe like your biggest progress uh, my biggest progress has been character because when I first came into wrestling um, I really didn't know you know what type of character I was going to be um, I actually tried to shy away from myself in general at first, like even even when I was in wrestling school I didn't want my name to be Keikoa because like f- I mean for those that don't know like Keikoa is my real name a lot of people just think it's a gimmick and I didn't want my name to be Keikoa because a lot of people mispronounce it so I'm like well you know to make it easier on the ring announcers and like just shows in general I'm like I probably shouldn't have a name that's a little bit harder to pronounce I've been dealing with my whole life but then I couldn't come up with anything else, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to stick with it. But the first nine years of my career, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't a strong enough character. I was just kind of like a generic, you know, baby face guy that would come out and just, you know, have the fans cheer for him or whatever. But there was no depth to the character. So then essentially at one point someone was really like, you know, we, we need more. Like we, there just needs to be more to you. And luckily, like, I revamped everything, and now that's why I'm the Hawaiian warrior, because Keiko actually means courageous warrior in Hawaiian. So I'm like, it was in front of me the whole time. I just didn't steer into it enough. I didn't have that guidance to steer into it until finally someone said, like, hey, you need something. So I had to figure it out. But, um, yeah, I, I think it, looking back, that would be my biggest thing is just just crank the, crank the nozzle up, you know, a thousand more times, you know. Is that how many times? Not even, like, ten times. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand more thousand, times. A thousand. It, it was, I, I was, again, I was very generic. And, and, I, and I, even when, when I got that advice, like, I knew, but I just didn't know what else. Again, I, I, I really didn't have that guidance. I really wish that um, someone would have, you know, kind of taken me under their wing even earlier. Because, again, like, nine years in, and finally, like, someone gave me that advice. So that's, you know, something that I always push you know, at my wrestling school, which is House of Champions, where, you know, like we're here to guide you, we're here to put you in the right direction because we need to create that circle in order to help you because otherwise you're just kind of floating out there and and you don't even know if you're making the mistakes or if you need to correct something, you know, all of those things. So, uh, but I was fortunate that it happened when it did. Yeah, because I was gonna say, I love the entrance attire. I love the paint, you know, it really feels like a, like a, 
a warrior yeah. out in the ring now. I, I fit in well at these uh, con shows. Definitely. It is bizarro out here after all. I actually did. I, I filmed this TikTok backstage because uh, with Mortal Kombat coming out, they have like the Mortal Kombat AI filter on, on TikTok. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm kind of already a Mortal Kombat character. So I wanted to see how the filter would be. So I'm excited to post that because I filmed it like right before I came out okay. yesterday. But but I've, I've gotten that a lot, um, even dating back to when I first debuted the character and I debuted my, my mask and my robe and everything. I faced my buddy Matt Saigon, who, um, you know, would wear the big like rice patty hat. Obviously, that is a character from from Mortal Kombat, you know, somebody that that portrayed that. So literally him and I just standing off, you know, face to face. And that was the first time I ever, you know, I was really debuting the character and then facing somebody that also had a character that would be able to match me. And then when I got to the back, everyone that was watching the monitor was like, it looked like a scene from Mortal Kombat. Like, this was so cool to watch. And I was like, okay, maybe I do have something here. And then I just, you know, kept rolling with it as much as I could. Are you a gamer? Uh, I would say I'm a, or media, someone... a media gamer. Media okay. gamer. Like, I love playing Warzone. Um, I love Madden. You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm a guy. I, play, I watch football. You know, I'll play football. Um, uh, I did get into Hogwarts Legacy because my wife is a big Harry Potter fan, so I'm like, I'll play it with you. Loved loved that game. Big Assassin's Creed guy. Um, so I would say, like, you know, media, because I, you know, I got two girls now, so, like, I try to change the time. Once they go to bed, I'm like, all right, it's my time. Like, I'll, I'll hop online and play a couple, but I'm not, like, hardcore, I'll say. But. Right. Are you, like, a Mortal Kombat player or, uh, as well, too? I, I used to. Yeah. I think I, I played the one. Wasn't there one? It was, like, the uh, like DC versus Marvel, right? Oh, there yeah. was a game that came out like that, right? Yeah, and there was, like, um, DC had their own, like, fighting game that yeah. was made by the creators of Mortal Kombat as I, well, too. I, and... I, tried, I tried that, you know, and, and I like it, but it, to me, it, it's kind of repetitive. So I'm like, I, I, I enjoy it for a little bit, but I'm like, right, on to the next thing. That's why I like Assassin's Creed, or I was a big fan of... Um, Batman, Arkham Knight, I oh, think it the was. Asylum and all those, yeah. Wonder City and all that. Because once you finish the storyline, like, you're not done. Like, there's a ton of other stuff that you can do. So there's a lot of times where, when I just want to, like, kind of lay, you know, lay back and not get destroyed by 10-year-olds online, <laughs> I'll, I'll pop that game in again. And I'm like, all right, I'll just roam the city. I'll do this. I'll do that. You know, just d different missions. It's funny. I was actually playing a little Street Fighter Six before we came here today and got a message from, like, some nerd. Yes, nerd, like raging at me for running away from him. And I'm like, I actually had to leave and get ready to come to Supercon. I wasn't running away. <laughs> no, it's fair. Especially when you, uh, like when I play Warzone and then uh, if I if I do end up killing somebody and then I hear it's a kid, I'm like, all right, I guess I'm not too bad. I'm like, I'm still, I'm still beating the, little, the young ones. That's what it's all about after the end of the day. <laughs> it's a big pat on the back for me. It is, it is. Uh, we'll do our Barry Horowitz right here. <laughs> now, you said, you know, you, how you got started into mm -hmm. professional wrestling. Was this something that you kind of dreamed of before you actually uh, enrolled into the wrestling school? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a fan. Um, you know, I, I, my earliest uh, memory was the 93 Royal Rumble. That's my first, like, I, I vividly remember watching that. Um, my mom tells me that, you know, I, I've been watching it since I was like three years old, but, you know, it's hard to obviously remember those things. But, um, but yeah, I've always been a fan, and then I, I always said that I wanted to be a wrestler, and then when I was going through school and I was playing sports, then it was like, okay, maybe I want to play basketball or maybe I want to play baseball. I'm not really sure. It wasn't until I went to Bud Carson's Pro Wrestling Store, and he was like, yeah, I have a, I have a ring in the back. And the very first time that I got into the ring, um, I just kind of stood there and I was like, this is pretty cool. And then I don't know what it was. I still explain it this to this day, but I walked over and I grabbed the rope. And for whatever reason, like me just grabbing the rope, I was like, it, it kind of something like kind of took over me and was just like, no, nah, this is it, dude. Like, this is, this is what you want. It was like, it was this weird, like, you know, realization or just moment that I had. And it was literally that that instant. Sorry about that. It's an alarm clock. My apologies. That's okay. We could do the Super Mario. It's all good. It is, <laughs> I'm at I'm at the con. It you is know, Super this Con. Is, yeah. There's plenty of Mario and Peaches running around here today. So yeah, it, it uh, it's it's very weird. It, it was almost like uh, you felt like you're calling, or you yeah, felt it, or something I don't, like that. Or? It, it was it was as if like nothing else mattered in the world after that. It was a very weird, like surreal moment. You know, and, and I, I didn't change my mind after that, obviously. Now, you are the head trainer right now. Correct. Um, so can you tell when somebody comes in, like, who wants it and who's just there because they think they can do it? Maybe, oh, like, right off the bat? 1,000%. Yeah. Um, you know, again, but I always say when 
I have people come in because for those that are watching this um, that are interested in becoming pro wrestlers, um, you can come down to House of Champions. We're in Longwood, Florida, and you actually get your first class free. It doesn't matter if you have some experience, no experience, you know, whatever it is, you get, a, you get, a, you get to come in for free to, to try us out to see if this is the, the spot for you. But I have a lot of people that come in, and you can tell instantly with somebody that, like, this is all that they wanted to do. Like, this is like a, their little kid the little kid in them is like screaming and then i have other people that come in that they they've always been a fan they they think they might want to try or they think that they can do it and then they get in and they roll around and they go like eh, maybe not but i also tell them like hey like i want you to prove me wrong because you know sometimes like people are just hard to read or sometimes people are just very reserved and you know then they might go home and then you know they don't sign up that day but then they work on you know their finances or they talk it over with their family or they figure out the situation and then they they come back like a week or two later and they go hey i want to sign up which is great and i and again i want them to prove me wrong i'm like hey you know i don't think he's going to sign up but I, I hope he comes back obviously so the the more times that i have that but it, it's very hard when this is something that you've always wanted to do like it's, it's instant yeah it's hard to contain it now since we're here at bizarro wrestling I feel it's only appropriate to ask you, maybe what is the most bizarro thing that you've encountered during your wrestling journey? Um, that's hard to say because it's there's a lot of weird things backstage, on the road, like in the ring or whatever. Um, I mean, my bare ass has been out multiple times during matches, um, willingly and sometimes unwillingly. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the list could go on there. Um, Things that pop off the top of my head, and this is only really weird for me. When when somebody watches this, they're probably like, "Well, that's not weird." Well, it was really weird to me. The one time I sneezed in the match, like I was on the ground and I like just took a move, so I'm selling and I'm dead, and then like all of a sudden, like I must have like hit a part of the rain that had a little bit of dust on it. But I was like, "Oh my god, I'm about to sneeze." I was like, "This is gonna be weird," and then I like put my arms like completely over myself and I sneezed, and then even a fan in the front was like, "Did he just sneeze?" And I was like, "That yeah, that was so weird to me." Because um, how many times do you ever watch wrestling and someone sneezes in the I, middle? I I, I, zero you, from yeah, what zero. I remember. So to me, like, that just dawned on me because I thought that was the weirdest thing. It's probably not weird to anybody else, but that was weird to me. But, yeah, I've encountered a lot of things and probably forgotten a lot of them. Um, uh, the only other thing that I can really remember, and this was, again, maybe a weird moment for me, was, you know, we, we hear all the time when, you know, all the lights are on but no one's home. You know, when someone gets, like, hit in the head or something of that sort. And... When I was growing up and I would hear that a lot, I would always think like, oh, okay, like, that's just a cool term that they're using. And, and then, no, I've been knocked out like on multiple occasions during the match. And then I'm looking back at the footage and I'm like, I don't remember any of this. And then there was also another time when a wrestler came off the top rope and they landed on my head when they went to do a top rope elbow drop. And I got knocked out only for a few seconds. But then it's so funny because my wife, who is also a wrestler for anyone that doesn't know, um, she comes to the she comes to the back after my match was over, and she's like, "What happened on that elbow drop?" And I didn't want to tell her yet. And I go, "Why? Why do you ask?" And she goes, "Well, he hit you with the elbow drop. He covered you, and then you kicked out. But you didn't kick out with like a lot of strength that you normally do. You kind of just like kind of rolled over like very easily." She's like, "You don't usually do that." And I said, "That's because I was unconscious." I was like, "And I don't remember that." <laughs> I was like, "But I remember waking up in the match and going like, yeah, you were just knocked out a second ago." It was like my body was like, or my brain was trying to, trying to catch up my body to be like, "We weren't home for a second. We're back now. You just need to keep on going." So very weird, like. Very weird experience for me. How do you recoup from something? like I've never been, thank God, like had that happen, been knocked out. But how do you recoup from like blacking out for a minute? Or have you had a situation where maybe your opponent was in mm -hmm. a similar situation and you had to help them through it? I've had both. Um, so the, the situation where I said I was like watching footage, or, like so someone was actually showing me pictures and, and clips that they took of the match, but I was already in the locker room. So when I got knocked out during the match, the rest of it is just completely blank, and I, I don't have any memory other than when I'm in the locker room and I'm sitting there and the match is over and I'm starting to take my stuff off. So, it, it, you know, there's nothing to recoup from. I'm like, well, it, it's gone. Right. And here, okay. and here I am. That one, when I said that my, like, my body woke up and my brain was kind of like catching us up, I was only really unconscious or, or knocked out um, for a couple seconds, but I was still fine. Like, again, like when I kind of like came to, 
again I, like i was fine i could keep going but it was a weird thing that my body was like trying or my brain was trying to tell my body like yeah you were just knocked out a second ago but y you know you're good now like keep on going but the other occasion when um i've had someone knocked out um it was really early in my career so i definitely didn't handle it in the correct way but i was wrestling did you like freak out a little bit no no, no I, I i also like didn't really recognize the signs i thought my buddy was just like selling really well because he was also came to later be my tag team partner. It was just somebody that I've known for a long time. And actually somebody that I, uh, I trained with. We trained at the same wrestling school. So I went to do a, a move off the middle rope. He was on my shoulders in like a fireman's carry position. I wanted to go do this move, but just the way that the rope was very slippery and it was very loose and stuff like that. So when I stood up, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be good. And we started falling forward. So I kind of did like the Finley roll. If you know what I'm talking yeah, about, where okay. we just kind of fall forward and I flip over him because there was no way I was slamming him. So I was like, this is, this is all we got. So I flipped over and I dropped him on his back, but he wasn't prepared for that. So he had his head back and, and he got completely knocked out. And now we're on the ground. And I was like, well, crap, that was supposed to be the ending. I was supposed to hit you with my finish. So rather than just crawling over and covering him or even checking on him to make sure he's OK, I just assumed that he was OK. So then I crawl on over and I'm like, hey. I was like, I, I got to hit you with this. I got to hit you with my move. Like, we need to get up. We need to get up. And he was, like, very slowly moving. And, like, I really, like, muscled him up. And by the time I got to here, it was as if he came back on because I hit him with the move perfectly fine. But then when we got to the back, he was like, nope, I was gone, dude. He oh. was like, I was, I was knocked out. So I, I really, you know, now as a, obviously a, a lot more experienced wrestler, even if I don't feel that someone should be knocked out in a situation, if I think that I – you know, sl slam them properly or I landed on them fine. I'm like, I still check on them. Like, literally every move, I'm like, you good? All right, let's keep going. All right, you good? All right, let's just keep going. Because I don't want to run into that anymore. It's got to be a little bit of freaky, I'm sure. It, w it was for yeah. that moment. And then even, you know, uh, like, spoiler from yesterday, when I hit, my, I hit my frog splash on my opponent last night and then the match was over, we ran out of time for those that didn't see it. And just the way that he was facing, so his mouth was was like this way and he, like if you were if you were where I am he was facing this way and I leaned in to check on him after the splash I was like hey man you good but since he was talking this way I couldn't hear him oh, okay. and the fans were going nuts at that point so he's talking this way and I was like yo are you good and I asked him again and I still couldn't hear him and I was like he can't be hurt. I was like, it didn't, it didn't feel like I landed on him. And I was like, bro, are you, are you good? Like I started, he's like, and he finally turned his head over. I'm like, yeah, he's fine. I'm fine. I was like, oh, I was like, don't scare me like that, dude. I was like, I want to make sure you're good. You're okay. Is there like an adrenaline rush you get out of like coming off the top rope and doing a frog splash? Even after so many times that you've done it? Not necessarily the splash. I would say maybe the moment after because the splash I don't really have the adrenaline of like I'm ready to hit this move. I have the I have like the focus of like, okay, where are they positioned? Okay, do I have to jump higher up or further out for this? Like I think my brain is too focused in that moment for for the move itself. But then once I hit it, and then you know if I'm going for the win or if you know they're going to kick out or whatever, like that's where the adrenaline comes in because I have them. I have the fans in that moment of you know, where I need them to either they're about to like lose their mind because they, if they want me to win or uh, they're about to, they're about to lose their mind because he's about to kick out and they weren't, they're not expecting that. So that's where I get the adrenaline of like, Oh, I got him. I got him. Now let's talk a little bit since we are here at Bizarro wrestling, this isn't your first go around at Bizarro. I believe you did the one in MegaCon as well this Correct. year in Orlando. Yep. So now we're here in Miami beach. What are people missing out? Like what is the experience at a Bizarro wrestling event versus, you know, your standard uh, wrestling show? Because, these are a lot more fun in regards to when you have and, it, and it's not because the other ones aren't fun. That's not what I'm saying, but it's a different style of show. So what I mean by that is, you know, when you go to a normal independent show, you know, there's storylines built in, there's backstabbing, there's, you know, titles that we're chasing and this and that and yada, yada, yada. It's a whole different type of um, storyline. It's a whole different type of, you know, build to these matches where there's a little bit of that here. But then because we're at a con and a lot of people that are also wrestling fans, but they're also here as con fans, we add in like the Mandalorian, you know, came out yesterday. And then when we were at MegaCon, you know, uh, Donatello, you know, comes out during my match and you're watching it and you're just like, what is happening? Like this is it's it's so much more fun for me because even when I'm talking about the match and I'm like, yeah, and then you hit me with 
the Pikachu doll, and then I turn around and Donatello comes out. And when you when you step back and you hear the conversation, you're like, what the hell? What the hell are they talking about? But it, like that's to me like why I think that these shows are are so much more fun because there's a whole other element of like you have no idea what's going to happen because like we're at a con because there's so many different fans of different aspects and that's what brings all of these people together so that's why i think for anybody that ever comes to a con if bizarro wrestling is around like definitely take the hour and and, and come check out the show because they probably have something up their sleeve yeah because i believe you wrestle blanco loco and dream girl ellie I Correct. think it was at Megacon, yeah. and he's always got that Pikachu with him anyways. I, I faced Blanco on the first night. Okay. Um, I beat the crap out of him with the Pikachu, but it's okay because I got beat up with a Pikachu, the, the, the same Pikachu, and then a Deadpool version of Pikachu the next night, which, again, goes back to, like, the, you can't, you can't write this shit. No, you can't. <laughs> it's bizarro. It literally is. Exactly. Yeah. What are people missing out if they're not coming to watch the Hawaiian Warrior in action? Yeah, it's hard for me to answer that. And the reason that I say that is because I connect I feel like I connect with different people in, in different ways because, you know, when somebody follows me on social media, um, you know, they, they see my posts, they see that I'm a girl dad, they see that, you know, I'm constantly in the gym or I'm helping with students and so on and so forth. So they get to see more of the personal aspect and then they see how much work I put into wrestling and my career and my body outside of you know, the 20 minutes that I'm in there. So then when those fans kind of come and they go, I'm aware of Keikoa, I know who he is, and they come and they watch a match, they're connected to me because they know the other side of me. So they're like, I see how hard he works, and then he, I see how awesome of a show he puts on. So, like, I just love that he's so passionate with everything, so it's a different type of connection. But then you have these other fans that have no idea who I am, and then again, like when we talked about when I when I walk out and I have my my big, you know, um, my helmet and my robe and everything like that, someone looks at me and they're like, who is this? Like, he's badass. Like, he looks cool. And then I come out and then you know I wrestle and they're like, that guy's really cool. Like, you know, why isn't he in AEW or why isn't he here? Why isn't he there? And like I connect to them in, in a different way. So. I can't answer like the, a direct answer for everybody, or, or uh, you know, a, a coverage of of the the thing that you miss most when you don't see Keikoa the Hawaiian Warrior on a show. But the thing that I can say is you're missing something. So whether or not uh, you know whether what aspect of the side of of the coin that you're looking at, you're missing something if you don't come and check it out. Now you've been doing this for several years. Yeah. You've had an array of opponents. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody still out there that you wish that you could throw it down with? That you haven't gotten in the ring with yet? Uh, anybody on the WWE roster. Anybody? Okay. <laughs> anybody, oh. anybody on the roster. I love that. I love uh, that answer. Oh, you know, you could obviously always say, like, you know, uh, the top guys like Orton and, and Roman. And, of course, like that, those are those are dream matches. Um, but overall, you know, with, um, you know, what I get to do outside of, you know, Bizarro Wrestling and, and the school, like, you know, I'm very fortunate that I get to, to train and I get to work around with a lot of people from, from the WWE roster. So... Me being able to get in the ring with them from a training aspect, you know, just fuels me more to being like, man, I hope that one day, like, you know, we can do this in front of in front of, you know, 10,000 people or, or, you know, in mania. And you know what I mean? Like, that's always a, a motivating factor for me. So um, there's no, no one in no one in particular. You know, I just want to do the, the best work that I can. And and you really start to learn that it, it doesn't matter who you get in the ring with if, if they're on WWE. It doesn't matter where they are on the card or how how experienced they are. Like, there's a reason that they're one of the top talents, and that's why they're employed by the company. And, uh, you know, I just want to get in the ring with everybody. Absolutely love that answer. Is there anything else that I haven't touched on that we should know? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, I'm really proud of, you know, being the uh, the head coach of House of Champions. We, we, we've talked about that. Um, for Again, for anybody that's not following me on social media, I'm very proud to be a girl dad. I love my two girls. I love my wife. Um, definitely a, 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 a happily, like, dad life guy, you know, on, on the personal side of things. Um, you know, we we t we talked about gaming. We've talked about wrestling. Like we've t we've we've pretty much covered my life. We've hit um, the cool stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So for anybody that doesn't follow me right now, um, you know, you, they can find me at on, on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at at Kikoa Pro. 
Um, on TikTok, unfortunately, somebody took Kekoa Pro. So I'm at Kekoa HW, obviously for Hawaiian Warrior. I still want that. I still want that oh. name. I keep reaching out to them. They literally don't use the account. It's just taken. Oh god. It's just taken, and they're sitting on it. So maybe one day, maybe if I get the ver- maybe if I get the blue check marks elsewhere, you they're can. like, hey, maybe, maybe we'll give you this one. Okay, come on, random We're guy. We're working on it. Yeah. Yeah, using the using the TikTok. Not even using it. No, definitely not even using it. Oh gosh. We got to get you that TikTok then. I'm working on it. I, I have, I, I only have like, I think 8,500 followers on TikTok right now. So when we get those numbers up, so please go follow me. So when we get those numbers up, hopefully I get the, I get the right. Yeah. Back. We'll start a petition for you to get that, exactly. that account. Well, I'm going to let you go get ready for night two. Night two. A bizarre wrestling here in Miami Beach, Florida at Florida Supercon. It was a pleasure. Yeah, man. Thank Can't you Can't so wait much. to catch you here tonight. Appreciate it. So guys, if you like interviews like this with the Hawaiian warrior, Kakoa. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button so you can stay tuned in here to Toned In Entertainment for future videos. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.